Yeah. So I think the biggest tip is don't just email people when you have something to sell them. And that's probably the biggest, I mean, mistake. I try not to be prescriptive and say, do this and not do this. But I can say that I see more success when people continue to have conversations. So for example, if you're a cozy mystery writer, if you're sharing recipes and just giving generously and not saying, you know, here's a countdown timer and here's my book and it's coming and it's coming and it's coming and, you know, have these transactional emails that lead up to it. That's priming the pump and people know when they're being sold to. So the difference is it's not subtle. If I'm being honest, it's not subtle. I can see a subject line and know immediately if it's somebody that is interesting and engaging versus just priming the pump and getting me ready to sell something. If it says countdown or if it says open now or if there's a sense of urgency, we tend to listen to a lot of marketers and marketing advice is great. But I think the shift now is getting not necessarily away from the commerce because that's important, but also focusing and prioritizing the relationship with your reader, asking good questions, giving them uh, the opportunity to weigh in on things, talking to them on Kickstarter or other places, you know, making one of the levels, killing off a character or saving a character. You know, you don't have to write by committee, but there is something to be said for keeping them engaged and keeping them interested in the ecosystem and in the sphere that you have. So I, I would say try and just analyze it and have people look at it and if you find yourself only emailing your readers when a new release is coming, you might think that there, there might be a different way that you can engage. It makes me think of a topic that I would not have expected to bring up in a flywheel versus funnel conversation, but that is book launches. And I found that for the last couple of launches of my books, so I'm publishing a book maybe every nine to 12 months. Mm -hmm. So... Once it's ready, at that point, I'm already on to the next book. And I became sort of fed up with like launch parties and things like that. And my last couple of launches were like, hey, I have a new book. <laughs> and I realized that I was, you know, that was not probably the best way to do it. But as an indie author, I also feel like the real value of my books is in the backlist. And I don't bank a lot on the launches. So it wasn't like a underwhelming launch was going to be a, a big impact for me. But do you think that there's an aspect of an indie author promoting their backlist that is better served by using a flywheel approach than using a funnel approach? I, th I think sure, especially depending on your genre, because you can thread in conversations from your backlist and maybe do a character study or maybe introduce a character or maybe have you know, a short conversation in your newsletter about it or on social media. So you can remind people of interesting things that they have said without beating them over the head with this is also for sale. And I think that's the difference, too, is we have this run up to a launch. And so many times launch parties are meant to. I think the intent was to celebrate the launch when really it just means for the authors who are, who are doing it, they're just beating their readers over the head with something new. And they don't realize that it's not, it's not a celebration anymore. It's more just pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. And, and, yeah. and, and I think, you know, as indies, we are responsible for pushing it, but there's no doubt about that. There's no one that's going to push your book. You don't have a publisher that's, you know, going to launch a full court press for you anymore. This is our responsibility and it's our opportunity to do that. But again, I think if we look at the language and we start to think about how can we continue a conversation with them and bring in interesting things to engage and ask questions and satisfy them and bring in other authors and collaborate and do different things to make them feel special and included rather than transactional, it, I think it's going to make all the difference in the world. Yeah, I'm realizing that uh, one thing that had drifted off my radar screen was the idea that a launch celebration is supposed to be a celebration. It's not supposed to be a sales <laughs> event. And I really like that idea that of, it would definitely be more comfortable for me to think about in what way do I want to celebrate the availability of this new book with the people who, who follow me and maybe attract the attention of people who don't follow me yet. You know, right. that could be part of it too. But think, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go on 
a Facebook Live with a glass of wine and I'm going to chat with people for an hour is a much more fun and less stressful way of thinking about it than, than some of the things that I see people doing for launches. And I guess the other part of that, which kind of goes back to the cyclical idea of the flywheel, is that it's much more comfortable for me. So I have a book that's based on, as backstory is a big fire that took place in Maine in 1947, the fire of 47 in Bar Harbor. And so every October, I pull up, I find some video clips or something like that about the fire, which was a fascinating event. And I post them and I say, oh, if you want to learn more, you know, I have a book with this backstory, which is much more comfortable for me and feels more organic than right. than a big splashy uh, launch for that book when it first comes out and then kind of uh, letting it sit aside. So I think that there's a lot of nice a comfort there to be had from the organicness and the non-transactional nature of this kind of relationship, this kind of flywheel relationship. Yeah, we also we did a, a webinar the other day that talked about out of the box thinking. One of the things that we talked about is you know, if you write fantasy, instead of, you know, trying to do this big social media push, why not partner with the Renaissance Fair? Why not have some of your characters cosplay and show up at the Renaissance Fair and get people to learn and know about your story and your world and bring them into your world instead of saying, here is a book I have for sale. Come read it. Get them engaged in it. That's sort of one of the interesting things that we talk about in the future publishing issue, too, is the advent of transmedia, which is you've got folks that are that learn about your world from alternate sources. Good concept of that is The Witcher, for example, because it started out as a game and no one knew that there was a book. And then there was a Netflix series and no one knew there was a game. And so that's a that's an example of bringing people in and then, you know, taking them deeper or more figuring out how they can learn more about your world and bring them into your fandom. So, you know, there's Lots and lots of ways to do that in very small ways, right? So you could offer a cookbook for sale, right? That's connected to your cozy mystery. The cookbook almost has nothing to do, but that is, you know, learning about the who wrote the cook. You know, it was a grandmother that wrote the cookbook or there's a ghost that wrote the cookbook. I don't know. Somebody wrote the cookbook that is tied to your story. So you've got different ways that you can make it interesting and engaging and do it out of the box rather than you know, slogging up Launch Mountain, which I think some of us just get so, it's exhausting. It really yes. is. It's so exhausting. So if there's ways that you can think out of the box and come back to and make it fun for yourself too, how much more do you resonate with someone that's enthusiastic and engaged and excited about what they're doing? And oh, hey, they have something for sale as opposed to, you know, feeling like you're getting beaten over the head with a, you know, credit card machine. It's just a it's I think it's a more organic way for you to feel better about it as a as an author and for them to feel better about it as a reader and to keep that connection a little bit more solid. 